Hello everyone, my name is Chris Clamp and welcome to my studio. So today's video is going to be a topic that might be very informative to the oil painters out there. This is a question that I've had many people ask me through the years, so it's something I want to share with you all. Many of you, much like myself, have probably spent a small fortune on brushes in the past. You wanna make sure that you care for them properly and they last a long time. Well, I found out some wonderful ways to make your brushes last a long time and I'm going to share that with you today. So grab a pen and pad, let's take notes. You ready? Let's dive in. So one of the biggest questions I've had people ask me in the past is what kind of brushes do I use? That is a very good question, a very relevant question even, but it's one that's a little difficult to answer because what works for me might not work for you. See, I also have tried other brushes that other artists have used that, that they, they use masterfully. And I think, well, maybe I can get the marks that they are getting if I use that brush. And it doesn't exactly work that way. I've tried a number of brushes in the past and I found a few that have worked well that I use. And I'll probably will share that with you in a future video. However, today's video, we're going to talk about how to care for your brushes because brush care and maintenance is almost as important as the brush you use because you can choose a brush that you love, one that is such a, a, an extension of yourself and gives you these wonderful marks. But if you don't care for that brush properly, it's not going to last very long. So today we're gonna to dive into some tips and tricks I've picked up in helping to extend the life of your brush and give it a longer life. So you will be able to really care for the investment that you're putting into your artist's tools. So before I go into the process of how I clean my brushes, let me give you a little backstory. So years ago, instead of buying really good, high quality artist brushes, the hipster in me thought that I had come up with a wonderful idea. I was going to the large arts and crafts stores out there, like Michael's, and buying these packs of brushes that contain somewhere around six to 12 different brushes in them of different sizes and shapes. They're relatively inexpensive. However, they don't last long. So I would typically use the brush until it got to a point where it was too frayed and gummed up to use again, and I would just throw it away. I wasn't really washing the brushes. What I did was I might have a brush washer near my tabaret, near my easel, and I would rinse them as I was working and wipe them off. But I really didn't get obsessive about washing them. I even got to a point where I employed another tip that another artist told me. See, when I would work at the art gallery, which I've mentioned in previous videos, I loved to talk shop with other artists that were represented at the gallery. And one thing that would come up sometimes is, brushes, what you're using, how you care for them. A favorite painter of mine that the gallery showed told me he actually didn't wash his brushes. He had a bucket in his studio near his easel that just had water and dish soap in it. And at the end of the night, when he was finished painting, he would just put his brushes, his oil painting brushes into this water with dish soap. What he would do in the next morning when he would come into the studio to work is he would take them out of the water and dish soap, wipe them off, put them in solvent like OMS or turpentine and wipe them off, and then he's good to go. The water and the dish soap help condition and keep the brush hairs and the bristles very supple and soft. However, the way that this artist works 
that kind of lended itself to his style because he wasn't someone that was trying to achieve something that I'm trying to achieve, which is a very soft, refined edge. His work was much more expressive. Therefore, his brushes being really tiny and, and cared for wasn't as important. So I was using what this artist had told me. I had bought a small bucket, which I kept water and dish soap inside. And at the end of the night when I was painting, I would put my brushes into those and let them soak. Now the problem that I had is the brushes would actually bend because they were pressed down by gravity into the bottom of the bucket. So due to the weight of gravity and the handle of the brush, it bent the bristle a little bit. I kind of rolled with it because at the time I was trying to be a little bit more expressive, even with some of the marks that I was making. So I kind of liked it, but after a while, the brush no longer served me. It was too gummed up and it was too bent to actually get me the mark that I wanted. So I threw them away. That was kind of my shtick for a long time is I liked these packets of brushes, which I would then use and just throw away. Not only is that wasteful, but it's also very expensive. Even when you're buying cheap brushes, it adds up. And why spend all that money on something you're just going to discard and care for so poorly? After that experiment, <laughs> I decided I should try out some nice brushes and see what happens. I bought some really nice brushes online from Trakel, and I bought some from Rosemary and a variety of other places to try to find what was going to be most effective and efficient for me. What I quickly found out is it wasn't the brush, it's how you care for the brush. I bought some beautiful brushes from Trakel and Rosemary and Co, and I didn't properly care for them. I still have them here, and they still pop up in paintings in which I need a mark that's a bit more broken and gummed up, so it helps. But I, every time I pick up that brush, I feel kind of bad because it's a really nice brush. And because I wasn't caring for it properly, all of this oil paint got caught in the ferrule. And that is where the paint dried and has caused the brushes to no longer be beautifully held together. Now, the anatomy of your paintbrush, obviously, that you have you have your handle and the metal part here is called your ferrule. And due to the way that it's crimped at the top, which holds your bristles, the brush hairs, that's kind of what gives it its shape also. Well, if you don't clean your brush well, oil paint will actually end up into this area at the bottom, into the ferrule, and it will dry because you haven't cleaned it well. And it causes the brush hairs and bristles to flay out, kind of like you can see here. This isn't gonna give me the mark I really want, and I'm kind of heartbroken because I love these brushes, but I didn't care for them properly. So that is when I went on a journey to find out how to properly care for your brushes. I tried a number of different ways to clean brushes. I used solvent, I used Gamsol, I used turpentine, I used water, I used masters, oil brush cleaner soap. Uh, I'm sure you know the kind. I used all of it. And all of it worked well, but not well enough. So I finally figured out what works for me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I clean my brushes today and give you a little insight on how it helps me and hopefully it will help you as well. Okay. Here in front of me on my table, I have a few tools that I'm going to show you that I use when cleaning my brushes. So you all probably have some sort of brush cleaner like this uh, that you use to clean your brushes uh, during your painting sessions and after your painting sessions. Well, I also have that, but I have two that I use. One is with OMS, which I use Gamsol by Gamblin, 
And the other one I have filled with safflower oil. Now, why do you have safflower oil in a brush cleaner? Well, when I'm painting, I try to limit the amount of solvent that I use during my painting process. I don't want to use too much solvent and cause it to break down my paint film. Remember, we're trying to observe the fat over lean principle while painting. So a big part of that is using less solvent as you're painting more into your painting, adding more layers onto your painting. OMS has kind of uh, been something that I think I've been exposed to too much through my years painting. And uh, when I'm around it too much, it really causes some allergic reaction with my sinuses. So I try not to be around it too much. I really just use it very limited when cleaning my brushes. However, with safflower oil, what's great is I can use it during my painting process. Whenever I'm working on an area, but I need to change a color or whatever the case, I can use the safflower oil to clean my brush. Remember, keep in mind, oil cleans oil. The safflower oil that I use in this one brush washer isn't anything special. I know at your art supply store, Gamblin sells a brush cleaner that is safflower oil. However, you don't need to buy that. You can get this at your grocery store. It doesn't have to be anything special. Uh, this is some basic one I bought at a local grocery store and um, you would, this is like in your salad dressing area of your store and you use this to clean your brushes. The paper towels that I use are the blue shop towels that you can get in a hardware store. These towels aren't exactly cheap. So what I do to limit them is I actually tear off a few sheets of this at the beginning of my painting studio time and I cut them in half. So I get two out of each and I just have a stack of these on my tabaret. And this is actually easier to use a half sheet than the full sheet, which is kind of large. These blue towels are very absorbent when it comes to oil, which is really helpful. That's what we're using it for as an oil painter. And they really don't produce a lot of lint like some paper towels. So when I'm working, um, I don't see a lot of lint flying around here or trying to get stuck into my wet paint layer. No good. Anyway, as I described to you, I use the Gamsol and the safflower oil to clean my brushes. And once they're thoroughly cleaned, then I go to the sink and use soap and water to clean the brush thoroughly. And then the brush is left out to air dry flat like this. One other thing that's super crucial, I want you all to keep in mind and put into practice in your studio time, is when you clean your brushes, I encourage you to wear gloves, whatever kind of glove you'd like, whether they are the latex, nitrile kind, such as I'm wearing, or some other kind of uh, like rubber glove. Whatever you use, I encourage you to use it. I remember I've seen so many students during my time when I was in art school uh, or even in other spaces where I've rented studio space for other artists and they're cleaning their brushes with bare hands. And it always really concerned me. I mean, just think about it. You're using your brush to paint with heavy metals such as cadmium and cobalt, things like that. And then as you go to the sink, to wash your brush out or whatever, you're scrubbing this into your bare hand. I mean, all that stuff is going into your skin. If you've got a cut, it's going in there. If you don't wash your hand really thoroughly and you start to eat something, you can be getting that in your mouth. So I encourage you, wear your gloves when you're washing your brushes, whether that's in these solutions I have in front of me or in the sink with running water. Here I am with my two brush wash containers. You can get these at your art supply store, obviously. And um, again, I have one 
that contains gamsol and one that contains safflower oil. And um, you do have to clean these out occasionally. Um, I usually wait until I'm finished with a body of work and I might take a few hours and do a very thorough cleaning. But otherwise, these work wonderfully when um, you just need to clean your brushes every day. So I have a brush here that I have pretty gummed up with some black mixture that I've been using today. And as you can see, when I wipe this off, it's, it's pretty on there. So what I do is I like to loosen it up with the Gamsol first. I wipe it off a little bit of the excess with the, on the paper towel, and then just run the brush hairs over the inside grate of the brush washer and then sort of uh, sort of scrape off, squeeze off the solvent on the edge a little bit so it's not so much. And as you wipe it off on the brush, you can still see there's a lot inside. Now you could keep doing this over and over again until you get it clean, which I used to do, but then I found that the brush still wasn't fully clean because paint still gets caught in the ferrule down here uh, below the bristles. So that's when the oil comes in handy. Again, like I said, oil cleans oil. So anyway, I'll run this brush across the grating with the safflower oil, and that loosens things up more. Now, as I wipe it, you can kind of tell that more has come loose now, okay? So I can go back to the Gamsol and repeat that process that I did at first and you'll notice that there's less again. And I'm kind of squeezing gently from the ferrule upward, not very hard because that can damage the bristles. Just give it enough of a squeeze that it kind of pushes the paint forward. I go back to the safflower oil and repeat that process. And notice it's really become very little at this point. I'm going to do it one more time. I mean, all the paint is pretty much off of my brush. But the last step I always do before rinsing the brush in the sink with soap is the safflower oil. It's great at conditioning the brush. And if I want to leave it until later in the evening before I'm fully finished and want to wash things in my sink, I feel confident leaving safflower oil on the bristles here while it rests on my tabaret or something because the safflower oil is not going to evaporate nor dry for a while. So it's going to be fine on the brushes, on the bristles, sort of conditioning them. Okay, now that we've cleaned our brushes and our two brush washers, what I do next is go to a sink with water and I use this lovely product by Trakel. It is a linseed oil soap. So it comes in this little container. This is a soap that is made from linseed oil and this stuff is wonderful. Now you could use this to clean your brushes without the other stuff, but I'm telling you what I use that works for me. It's like a three part system, but it works. I mean, this is a wonderful rosemary and co brush that I've had for several years and it shows a little age, but for the amount of work I put this thing through, this is in great condition. Okay, this is whenever we reach the final step of how I clean my brushes using the linseed oil soap by Trickel and some water. I'll just dampen my brush and get the soap activated with the brush bristles and work it in with my hand. Again, like I said, please wear some sort of skin protection like a glove so you might not be rubbing bits of cadmium red into your skin that you might then 
ingest in some way. We want to have a safe studio practice while also making amazing artwork. Now, what you will notice at times is when I'm using the soap and I'm working it into the bristles, you, you will see paint that is still caught in the brush. Sometimes I'll do this. You may have seen it on that last attempt with the soap and water. The, the suds were actually a color. They were kind of that brown from that chromatic black that I had mixed up. Now they're, they're very clear and white, as you can tell. It's because the linseed oil soap has helped loosen whatever bits of paint were still remaining in the bristles, probably down in the ferrule. Again, like I said before, oil cleans oil. So that is why this linseed oil soap is so important as a final step because it gets anything out that is still remaining. And there we go. Our brush is clean and good to go. I just take this brush and set it in my studio on its side and let it dry overnight. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. If you like this video and you found the information helpful, please click the like button. I'm trying to grow this channel and your viewership helps tremendously. If you found it helpful, please share it with some of your artist friends out there. I, this technique I've just shown you is something that has really helped save so many brushes to me. I no longer am buying brushes every month it seems, even though I might want to. Anyway, I hope you liked it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so at this time so you can stay informed and up to date with new content and new information like this. Anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful day and a lovely time in the studio. Let's get back to work. Happy painting.